Uh, good morning everyone and welcome back to the course on classics in total synthesis part 1. So, we have been discussing about uh, you know 3 membered ring, 4 membered ring, 5 membered ring, 6 membered ring based natural products and today we will talk about a very interesting alkaloid. Yes, alkaloids are very very interesting natural products. So, we will be discussing many synthesis of alkaloids and the first synthesis of alkaloid today we are going to discuss about perhydrohistrionicotoxin. The name, it, name itself uh, looks little longer, but you can break it like this perhydrohistrionicotoxin. Perhydrohistrionicotoxin. Okay. So, there are three natural products isolated from the same source. The first one is called histrionicotoxin. Okay. So, here you can see there are two side chains, there are two side chains okay, having an E9 moiety. Okay. There are two side chains having an E9 moiety, but the core structure is a spiro fused system. Okay. One six membered ring fused with a piperidine ring, okay. a six membered ring fused with a piperidine ring with two side chains having an E9 moiety. Okay. The second natural product is the one where the triple bond is reduced to a double bond. Okay. The triple bond is reduced to the double bond while the double bond is fully reduced. So, this is called octahydrohistrionicotoxin. Okay. The third natural product is fully reduced natural product called perhydrohistrionicotoxin. It is completely reduced. The side chain is completely reduced. So, this was isolated from the venom of a Colombian frog called Dendrobatus histrionicus. This was isolated and reported way back in 1971 and 73 by Wittkopf and co-workers. Okay. And in fact, they they asked Professor E. J. Corey to see whether this can be synthesized by his laboratory. Okay. And immediately uh, E. J. Corey's group took upon the total synthesis of uh, this molecule and then they reported the first total synthesis of perhydrohistrionicotoxin. And his synthesis involved two important reactions, one is pinacol, pinacolin rearrangement other one is a Barton reaction. So, before we actually go into the details of the total synthesis of perhydrohistrionicotoxin by E. J. Corey, we will briefly discuss about or briefly recall the pinacol pinacolin rearrangement and Barton reaction. I am sure all of you would have gone through these two reactions, but it is a brief recall. It is very important to know before we actually proceed to look at the total synthesis of perhydrohistrionicotoxin reported by E. J. Corey which involves these two key reactions. So, what is pinacol pinacolin rearrangement? So, if you have a 1 2 diol okay, if you have 1 2 diol and upon treatment with acid this undergoes a facial rearrangement to a ketone called pinacolin. So, the whole process is called pinacol to pinacolin because it goes from pinacol to pinacolin. How does it happen? So, when you have a diol, one of the alcohol is protonated. So, once it is protonated automatically it becomes a good leaving group. So, once it goes then it generates a carbocation. Though this carbocation is stable because it is a tertiary carbocation, it is stable, but the presence of a hydroxyl group presence of a hydroxyl group adjacent to that makes it less stable because the lone pair on the oxygen now can push one of the alkyl groups or aryl groups to migrate so that you will get this intermediate where now the positive charge which is formed here is stabilized by the oxygen. Okay. So, this is more stable than the tertiary carbocation. So, this is the driving force for the migration of an alkyl or aryl group from 
the adjacent carbon with respect to the carbocation form. Okay. So, one can ask why uh, this migration should take place when uh, already the carbocation is tertiary and there is no ring strain, but still the migration takes place because the stability of the carbocation by the lone pair on the oxygen okay, that actually helps the migration of an alkane or aryl group to facilitate this phenacol and phenacolon rearrangement. Okay. So, there are many examples, I will just give few examples at least 2 or 3. So, when you have a diol like this, this upon pinacol pinacol and rearrangement first protonation takes place and followed by the leaving of water to generate the carbocation. Now, the lone pair pushes this CC bond. Okay. So, it is a symmetrical does not matter this CC bond to migrate or in other words ring enlargement takes place because of the migration of the CC bond ring, en ring enlargement takes place. So, what you get is a spiro system okay, the spiro 4 5 system you get. Okay. Then one can also see if we have unsymmetrical diols which alcohol will be protonated first. So, if you have an unsymmetrical alcohol obviously it will protonate the alcohol which will give more stable carbocation. So, now if you look at this example there are two alcohols. So, between these two alcohol this alcohol will be protonated because that will give a carbocation which is more stable than the other carbocation. This carbocation will be stabilized by two phenyl groups. Okay. So, that is why that will be more stable and then this bond will migrate. So, leading to the formation of 1 and this is the predominant or major products and not the other one. Okay. So, the migrating group preference is important, but at the same time first the formation of most stable carbocation is the real driving force for the migration of the next one. Okay. The second reaction which is used by E. J. Corey in the synthesis of perhydronicotoxin is Barton reaction. The last two decades or more one has witnessed a large number of publications on CH functionalization, CH activation and functionalization. But Barton has reported this reaction long time ago where angular methyl group, angular methyl group in steroids can be easily functionalized by this reaction. What is this reaction? So, if you have an alcohol like this, it is very important that alcohol should be axial. Okay, axial. Now, if you treat with NOCl and pyridine, okay, so that OH will become ONO. Okay, OH will become ONO. Now, this I am shining with light, it forms oxygen radical okay, and NO also comes out. Now, if you look at this carefully through a 6 member transient state this oxygen radical can pick up this hydrogen. If that happens then you will get OH and the CH3 now will become CH2 radical. Okay. The CH2 radical immediately will combine with the NO radical which came out when this ONO bond got cleaved you got oxygen radical and NO radical. So, now what will happen the CH2 radical combined with the NO radical to form CH2 NO. The CH2 NO immediately tautomerize the CH2 NO immediately tautomerize to give the corresponding oxide. Okay. So, what you have seen now in the whole process the angular methyl group which is really very difficult to functionalize has been functionalized by this reaction. So, this reaction was reported by Barton. So, normally this is called Barton's reaction. Once you have this oxygen, one can hydrolyze the oxygen to get the aldehyde or if you have an oxygen, you know another famous rearrangement can be considered. So, Beckman rearrangement can happen. So, that way the CH3 will be converted into amine, okay, amide followed by amine. So, many things can be 
done having the oxide moiety at angular methyl group. So, these are the two reactions which you should remember when we talk about total synthesis of perhydrohistionicotoxin reported by E.J. Quarren. So, this is the structure of perhydrohistionicotoxin. Then the first step, the first retrosynthetic step was to remove the, the 5, 5 carbon unit. Okay. But before I actually talk about retrosynthesis, if I tell that this compound, this natural product was made from cyclopentenone. Can you believe this compound was synthesized from cyclopentenone? Cyclopentenone is the commercially available starting material and that was the starting material for the synthesis of perhydrohistionicotoxin. It, it may be difficult to believe for the simple reason that if you look at the natural product, there is no 5 membered ring, isn't it? Is there any 5 membered ring? No. You have two 6 membered rings, one is normal cyclohexane, other one is 5 membered derivative, okay? they are fused in a spiral fashion. And I am claiming that the starting material is cyclopentanone. So, that is the power of retrosynthesis. If you logically think and logically write a proper retrosynthesis that can lead to a very, very simple commercially available inexpensive starting material and also the whole reaction sequence will be very simple and straightforward. Okay. So, now the first retrosynthesis was the addition of this 5 carbon unit, addition of this 5 carbon unit to this imine. Okay. If you have an imine, okay, if you have an imine, the equatorial addition, equatorial addition of this 5 carbon grignard or lithium that will give you the natural product. And afterwards you have to protect the, re remove the protecting group. Of course, when you do this, the hydroxyl should be protected. So, that is the first two retrosynthetic steps. Now, once you have this imine, this imine can be obtained from the lactone. Okay? This imine can be obtained from the lactone in two steps. Okay? So, whenever you have a lactone, whenever you have a lactone or whenever you have an amide, there are many reactions you can think of. One, you can have a carboxylic acid and amine and intramolecular coupling reaction will give you the corresponding amide. Uh, here it is cyclic, so it is a lactone. Then one can also think about Beckman rearrangement, isn't it? One can also think about Beckman rearrangement where you have an oxime, that oxime can undergo Beckman rearrangement. Again, the position of the nitrogen depends on the regiochemistry of the oxime. So, for example, if you have this oxime, okay, if you have this oxime, then this can possibly, this can possibly give you this lactone. How? Because if this is the leaving group, then the bond which is opposite to that leaving group only migrates, that will give you exactly the same lactone. Okay. So, the key reaction so far if you look at is the Beckman rearrangement to get the 6 number ring, okay, 5 number to 6 number ring. Okay. Now, normally how do you get oxygen? Normally, how do you get oxygen? All of us will immediately think, okay, oxygen is very easy, you can start from the corresponding ketone, is not it? You can start from the corresponding ketone. If you have the ketone, then treat with hydroxylamine, you will get the corresponding oxygen. That is how normal people will think. But as I said, this synthesis was reported by the Nobel laureate E.J. Corey. So, he has some special disconnection for this particular step. So, instead what he thought was this oxygen should be prepared or can be prepared from this alcohol and there is no ketone. Okay. This is where you should recall the reaction which I mentioned that is Barton reaction. So, if you have this alcohol and then treat with NOCl pyridine and under photochemical condition the NO group will be transferred to the CH2 through the 6 number transient state. 
then that NO will become oxime and that oxime you can treat with acid to get the corresponding Bergman rearranged product. So, this is a very very important reaction and people normally would not have thought about uh, using Barton reaction to get the oxime. Okay, that is a very clever uh, thinking and because of that, because of that the whole synthesis become much much simpler. Okay, because you do not need to introduce a ketone, just CH2 is there, just you do this Barton reaction. Now, the next step if you look at you need to introduce a hydroxyl group. Okay, this is a 5 membered ring, no problem. But here you need to introduce a hydroxyl group and as well as this 4 carbon unit. So, what is the relationship between these two? They are 1, 2 and they are trans to each other. 1, 2 and trans to each other. How you can introduce this? Okay, how you can introduce this? See, if you are thinking about alcohol, you can start from the ketone, reduce it. We do not know whether it will be selective. In that case, your butyl group is in axial position, the hydroxyl is in axial position. Both normally you do not expect, is not it? The, normally all the groups will try to go to equatorial position. Here, both butyl as well as hydroxyl groups are sterically hindered axial position. So, another very interesting reaction EJ Kore used to fix these two stereo centers. When you do a hydroboration, when you do a hydroboration, so what you do say for example, if you take a phenyl cyclohexene, okay. now if you do hydroboration and oxidation, if you do hydroboration oxidation, hydrogen and boron, hydrogen and boron will come from the same side because it is a cis addition. Okay. Hydrogen and boron will come from the same side. That means the boron which will essentially be converted into hydroxyl will be opposite to that of phenyl group, correct? Will be opposite to that of phenyl group. Basically what you get is the alkyl or aryl group and the hydroxyl group trans to each other. And when the hydroboration takes place, the hydrogen and boron will come from the least hindered side. So that means if you look at this, the hydrogen and boron will come from the least hindered equatorial side, pseudo equatorial side, so that your alkyl group will go to axial. So, the precursor is nothing but this alkene. If you take this alkene, do your hydroboration oxidation, you will get this compound. Okay. Then how do you get this compound? Very simple. If you have this ketone, then add butyl lithium followed by dehydration, you will get this, is not it? Butyl lithium and dehydration. And this compound, when I talked about pinacol, pinacol and rearrangement, I told you this spiroketone can be obtained from this pinacol, okay, can be obtained from this pinacol. Now, this pinacol is obtained from cyclopentanone. So, this is what I said when you can think about proper retrosynthesis and use some clever disconnection and use some nice reactions, one can get a very simple starting material and the whole strategy will be a classical one. This is one of the classical total synthesis reported in the literature by E. J. Cohen. Okay. Now let us see whether the retrosynthesis what he had proposed, he could easily follow it in the lab to complete the total synthesis. Okay. Those who are interested they can go through these two references. First he started with cyclopentanone then pinacol coupling um, got the pinacol this upon treatment with the aqueous sulfuric acid you get the corresponding the pinacol, pinacol and rearrangement. So, this is quite easy and straightforward and once you have that add n-butyl lithium. So, n-butyl lithium adds to the ketone 
and then followed by dehydration uh, done by thionyl chloride pyridine to get the corresponding alkene. Okay. So, now that you have the alkene next step is the hydroboration oxidation. Yes, hydroboration oxidation with hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide gave the corresponding secondary alcohol and the secondary alcohol as well as the butyl group they are anti to each other. Okay. Now, this can be written like this, this can be written like this, it is a relative stereochemistry, it is not asymmetric synthesis, this is relative stereochemistry and that is why I have written this solid bond. Okay. Now, once you have this, you can clearly see you have introduced the spiro system and the butyl group and the hydroxyl group with correct stereochemistry, spiro system, butyl group, hydroxyl group with correct stereochemistry. Now, you have to use this handle, the hydroxyl handle to introduce the oxide, okay. you have to introduce the oxide as planned. So, for that what one has to do? Barton reaction. So, he took this alcohol and then treated with NOCl pyridine, then shine light. So, first it forms the ONO, so under photochemical condition the ONO bond breaks and then it gives oxygen radical and NO radical. Now, the oxygen radical picks up the hydrogen radical from here through a 6 membered transition state, okay, through a 6 membered cyclic transition state. Okay. It picks up the hydrogen and that gives you the corresponding radical in the 5 membered ring. Okay. Once the hydrogen is picked up, you get the corresponding radical here. Then the NO radical which went out will combine with this cyclopentyl radical to form the corresponding NO. Okay. It is like cut and paste, if you look at this chemistry, it is very nice interesting chemistry. You attach NO, cut it, then attach to other side, cut and paste chemistry. Then once you have NO, this NO immediately tautomerizes to corresponding oxide, immediately tautomerizes to the corresponding oxide. So, you have the oxide, the next step is carry out the Beckman rearrangement. Okay, the Beckman rearrangement is very simple, so one can use acid. So, what they have done is they have treated with para toluene sulfonyl chloride. Okay, so, selectively they can tosylate the oxime OH, then followed by migration of this bond gives you the lactam. You have the lactam, the next two steps, first treatment with LH, what will happen if you treat with LH? What will happen when you treat a lactam with LH? It will become the corresponding amine, is not it? The carbonyl group, group will be completely removed. The lactam will become the amine. Okay. Then you have the free hydroxyl. The free hydroxyl will be protected by the TBDMS chloride. So, what you get is the corresponding OTBDMS or one can write OTBS also. Okay, TBDMS can be written as TBS as well. So, now what is left? So, you need to introduce the 5 carbon unit at this carbon. You need to introduce a 5 carbon unit at this carbon and that 5 carbon unit also, 5 carbon unit also has to come from the equatorial side. Okay. So, for that as per the original plan, as per the original plan, you need to introduce a double bond. Okay, you need to introduce a double bond. You have NH and you need to introduce a double bond. How will you do? Yes, you can brominate. Now, if you treat with base potassium amylate, N amylate, potassium N amylate, it undergoes elimination of HBr. Okay, it undergoes elimination of HBr to introduce the double bond. Okay. Now, once you have the imine, next you have to add the 5 carbon unit, you have to add the 5 carbon unit. What you have to do? The 5 carbon unit is 
corresponding n amyl lithium. Amyl is 5 carbon ok. So, you add the 5 carbon unit. So, once you do that then that 5 carbon unit also you can see it will add from the less hindered equatorial side ok. The 5 carbon unit will add from the less hindered equatorial side. After that the T buff is a fluoride source is used to remove the TBS group. Addition of NMA lithium followed by removal of TBS group you get the natural product that is perhydrohistrionicotoxin ok. So, as I said this is one of the classical synthesis of an alkaloid where two very simple reactions but cleverly utilized. One is pinnacle pinnacle rearrangement, the other one is Barton reaction. The Barton reaction, the use of Barton reaction is really ultimate, ultimate thinking. Otherwise, normally people think that the oxine can be made from keto group. But here, we cleverly use the Barton reaction from CH2 to introduce the oxine. That once you have the oxine, that paved the way for the ring expansion to get the lactam and that is how you could make the other 6 membered ring ok. So, overall in few steps EJ Corey could and his group could synthesize this perhydrohistrionicotoxin starting from commercially available cyclopentone ok. So, thank you I will stop here.